the Noble Eightfold Path is the, um, the sort of principal means of, of putting the Buddha's teaching into action. So uh, his uh, initial teaching that he gave, uh, the, what's called the turning of the wheel, the Dhammachaka Pavatana Sutta, he explained the middle way and the Four Noble Truths. And the Eightfold Path is the core of the Fourth Noble Truth. So the Four Noble Truths, it's a kind of medical diagnosis. So number one, the symptom is dukkha, is dissatisfaction, unsatisfactoriness. That's the spiritual malaise. That's the we are not totally happy all of the time. So that's the symptom. Uh, then the cause, uh, is second noble truth, is self-centered craving, tanha, various kinds of, of craving, craving for sense pleasure, a craving to, uh, to be, craving to not be. Uh, there's three kinds of, of craving. That's the cause of that dissatisfaction. Then uh, th the third noble truth is the prognosis. Is it curable? Yes. <laughs> dukkha niroda, that, that dukkha, that dissatisfaction can come to an end. And then the fourth noble truth is the treatment. And it's, it's cast into a, a f uh, this sort of a medical diagnostic form. And maybe uh, the Buddhist uh, historians and buddhologists uh, in, the, in the mix can, can come up with a definitive answer one day. Some, some people say the Buddha produced this and then the Ayurvedic system of, uh, or the ancient Indian system of medical diagnosis and analysis arose from the Buddha's structure, and other people say, no, no, the Buddha used an already existent medical form as a, a way of expressing his teaching. So which one came first, chicken or egg, is debatable. But the, uh, the Eightfold Path then is the, uh, the treatment. So that is the, what you do to get from truth number, uh, number two, the cause of suffering, to truth number three, the, the ending of suffering. Uh, and so the, the Eightfold Path uh, it can be summarized into, into three sections, that of virtue, that of mind training, and that of wisdom. The, the traditional structure of the Eightfold Path, um, the first two elements are uh, samaditi, uh, right view, and samasankapa, right intention or right resolution. So uh, those are both part of the wisdom aspect. And uh, so they are... Um, uh, in a way, setting the direction for the mind, the right, right view. Uh, and also with the word right, uh, comes from the Pali word sama. It doesn't mean right as opposed to wrong, so much as right as in upright or balanced. So probably the word attuned is more helpful. It's, it's related to the, the term sama, which is used to, des to describe the, the strings of a vena or a, mu a musical instrument being in harmony with each other. So that quality of attunement, so attuned view, attuned intention. So right view, right intention are the uh, first two. So it starts off with some of the wisdom factors. Then it goes to the um, uh, conduct factors. So then right speech, right uh, action, right livelihoods. And so those are uh, to do with what we say, uh, uh, how we uh, relate to other living beings, how we relate to the world, how we relate to our, our body and the material um, the, uh, existence that we uh, are, are a part of. And then livelihood, sama uh, achiva, is the um, what work do you do, uh, both as a layperson and as a monastic? You know, how do you relate to the world of work? And so, uh, so those are the, the sila, or the, the conduct factors. And then the mind training, uh, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Uh, those are the, the three um, uh, uh, factors that are to do with that meditation and uh, how we work with the mind in particular in order to bring about uh, a quality of, uh, of peace and freedom um, through working with the mind. So right effort, um, Right, mindfulness, sama vayama, sama sati, and then um, sama samadhi. Um, the, those are the last three. And I mean, we could talk for a week about the nature of the Eightfold Path <laughs> and how those elements work together. But essentially, it's uh, virtue, concentration, wisdom, or you know, uh, or, uh, virtue, mind, training, and, uh, and wisdom are the three parts of it. 
And in terms of how that uh, relates to our, our life in the world, then it's all of it. <laughs> how do we work together, like the three of us in this room at, at this moment? Uh, how do we communicate with each other? Uh, what is the work that you're doing? Uh, what's my, what's my, uh, my, my work as a monk and my, my role in this monastery? How do I do that? Do I do it well? Do I not? What, what, what are the factors that are involved? So the, um, the Eightfold Path uh, and uh, see the aspects of, of living skillfully in terms of conduct and, then, and, and our work and then how we train the mind towards clarity, towards peacefulness, towards brightness and then wisdom how do we develop the quality of understanding and uh, and the uh, say the vision of reality in terms of seeing in terms of dharma or dhamma rather than in terms of self view um, that's completely um, say unified with how to function in the world so whether you're working in a bank or you're working for the alex berzin archives uh, or you're uh, working in a monastery, whatever we happen to be doing, we are working through the, the medium of our mind. We are communicating with other, other beings, with other, other people. We are having to make choices uh, about uh, what we do, what we don't do. We're having to, we, we are confronted with ethical issues uh, uh, about what, what to do, what not to do. Uh, how to relate to other to the the people around us? How do we meet with success? How do we meet with failure? How do we meet with praise? How do we meet with criticism? We haven't got time for it here. We're going into the various details of okay when we when we say samaditi right view or a tuned view. You know, how does that relate to how do you see your family or your workplace or the life on uh, you know, driving on the road? Uh, uh, Sama sankapa right intention or right resolution. That's about decision making. How, how do we make decisions? How do we, uh, say, use the capacity to intend and direct our, our life, our mind, uh, as being something that is of benefit to other beings, that is, uh, that is beneficial and, and uh, liberating and not harmful or divisive, destructive. So, uh, and then so forth with the other factors that you can spell out the detail of how each one of those works, you know, right speech, right action, right livelihood, uh, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Uh, each one you can go into detail about exactly how that would work if you're in a bank or you're driving a bus or you're uh, working in an archive or, uh, or running a website and, or running a monastery. Um, and so we don't have the, the time and situation to go into that, but I would say it's, it's totally relevant. One interesting teaching that we find in the, in the Pali scriptures uh, one particular sutta where the Buddha says it's you know, right view, right effort, and right mindfulness. Those three, they circle around and they, they're a kind of guiding force for all the factors together. So right view, seeing how things work, <laughs> and seeing that, and that's, that seeing being in accordance with reality, with, with, with Dhamma. Uh, and then effort, the, the way the energy is directed, what you do and how you do it. And right mindfulness, that uh, a full full scale attunement to the time, the place, the situation, those three kind of circle around and protect and guide all of the factors of the path and integrate them. So that that I feel is uh, extremely relevant. So whether uh, with is to do with family life or the working life or your physical health or um, political issues and so forth, those those three right view, right effort, right mindfulness that they have a particular prominence. Uh, in everybody's life, I would say, they, and they can be extremely useful in guiding how we uh, how we work, what we do, and how we do it.